Hey guys, Michael here again. Uh, just going to do a tutorial on depth of field in Maya, uh, particularly with uh, RenderMan. You could do this with Mental Ray or anything else if you want. Uh, it's all attributed to the camera and the way you set it up. So um, I've got a little scene set up here um, with a character from a show, uh, a podcast called Tales from the Tavern. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a camera that pushes the focal depth um, depending on where the camera is focused in and out of focus. Um, you'll see I've already set up a backdrop um, with an HDRI uh, sphere um, and I've got a little light above them as well. Uh, all right, so let's get into it. Now you can actually do this off the perspective camera, um, but because uh, in case you want to edit more on the scene and leave the camera that you're rendering off where it is It's probably best just to create a new camera. So let's start off by doing that So let's go create camera and just whack a camera in there. I'm gonna hit space and go to my side view now um, and We're gonna go create and create a couple of uh, nodes to measure distance. So this is um, what is going to determine where the camera is focusing and you'll understand a little bit more in a second so we're going to create a distance distance tool and we're going to go into the side view which is side onto the camera we're going to create the first node there it doesn't really matter where and the second node there um, and you'll see it's measuring out the distance between the two nodes and that is what we're going to plug into the focal distance in the camera all right so I'm just going to hit Q to go to my selection tool. I'm going to select the camera uh, and then I'm going to select the first node. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to parent, make the camera the parent of the node. So when you want to parent something, you need to select the parent first and then the child second. Uh, and uh, make sure you're on animation. And then we're going to go to constrain and we're going to click parent with the uh, options uh, thing. Uh, and make sure that maintain offset is off because we want to lock the node into the um, into the sensor of the camera essentially. So I'll hit add and it's done that. Um, all right, so now um, we need to open up. So we want to go to Windows. Uh, we want to go to Hierarchy and open that bad boy up. And this is the scene hierarchy. Um, and this just determines how different uh, uh, different nodes of objects and things you've got in the scene interact with one another. Uh, so we're going to select, oh, we're actually also going to open up uh, Relationship Editor, uh, sorry, no, General Editors, uh, Connection Editor. And this is where we're going to make the connections between the two things. Uh, so in the hierarchy, uh, editor you want to select the distance node and then we're going to open that up and you'll see it shows the um, nodes that are plugging into it at the moment it's got this distance uh, dimension selected you don't want that you want the shape um, and if you open uh, with the connection editor open uh, you just click reload left and that's saying that the thing on the left is the thing that it's coming out from and we scroll all the way down to the bottom and we select distance and then if we go back to the hypergraph uh, in, uh, ne uh, editor and we go back to the scene by clicking this one here then we want to select the camera and go to its connections uh, and then we want to select the camera shape and reload right um, now if you see the attribute editor on the right here with the camera selected, um, you'll also want to enable depth of field. And it will get, give you this thing here, that's fine. Um, and what we're now looking for on the right hand side of this is the focal distance. So essentially what's going to happen is this distance uh, attribute here is going to control this focal distance here. So if we scroll down uh, and find it, it's kind of hard to find. Uh, we're looking for focal distance. Focal length is not what you want. Focal distance. And once you've selected those two things, they are plugged in. You can close that and you can close that. And then if you select the camera with the move tool, you'll see 
that um, in the, oops, sorry, open, in the attribute editor, where is it? Attribute editor, the focal distance will now, the focal distance will now change depending on where the camera is. So um, if you put the camera in a position and then you select the end point, it's usually easier to do this in the uh, outliner, um, and move that, that number there determines the num the distance of the focal length. So 3.75, 3.75, so it's the same. And we can move that locator around as easy as you want. So um, how are we gonna focus on him now? If you go into um, 3D and you change this particular panel perspective to camera one, you can sort of get an idea of what's gonna be in focus. Um, if you're not seeing like this depth of field um, in the preview, it's this button here, we'll turn it on and off. So if you wanna bounce in and out of that, you can just click that on and off. Um, and controlling this end node, the second locator, is kind of difficult in the first person camera view. So what I like to do is in the overhead, select have the node selected, the, which is the second locator, and just move it into place roughly from overhead and then go back into this and sort of just bounce between the two and you'll see whether or not you've got it where you want it to be. Um, so this is pretty much good to go. Um, let's just zoom in a little bit here and have a look at the gate. Yep, that's fine. Actually, before you have a look at a render, you need to make sure um, that you've got the correct camera re rendering. So uh, go to your rendering options and scroll down. At the, it should have perspective um, by default. You want to select camera one and then close that. And then we'll go to preview render. All right, so as you can see, um, because that node was on his face essentially, um, his face is pretty much all in focus and then it sort of goes blurry on the sword and sort of towards the end of the sh edge of the shoulder there and stuff. Um, essentially how it works, imagine like a two-dimensional plane, uh, which is like shot out from the front of the camera. And then um, whatever is on within that plane or within like a region of that plane um, is going to stay in focus and you can control this. Um, so if you jump back into the camera shape, um, the f-stop is going to determine part of it and the focus region scale is going to determine part of it as well. So if you've ever done any photography, you'll know that f-stop is essentially going to control the length of uh, what's in focus. So at a low f-stop, um, you're going to have a, it's essentially a wide aperture or the, the sort of the circly bit inside the camera where the light comes through is wide, which means there's going to be less in focus. So uh, the smaller the number, less is in focus, but more light will come through. Um, I don't think it actually affects how much light you get in Maya. Uh, like it won't affect the light settings in Maya. You can only do that with lighting and stuff. Uh, I don't think it simulates that properly, but that I haven't really tested this. So um, with 5.6, that's what you're going to get there. Um, a couple of other standard f-stops that you'd have on a camera would be 8. So let's have a look. Even in the preview, you can see that there's more in focus. So let's do a render and see what happens. All right, so there's a little bit more in focus already. The background's coming in to be a little bit sharper. Um, let's try two more steps. Um, next most standard is 11. Okay, so you can see at uh, an f-stop of 11, more is coming into focus. Basically, his entire head's in focus and the sword in the background is sort of starting to sharpen up. And let's have a look at the last um, f-stop, which is 16. Okay, so you can see almost all of his in, him is in focus now. Um, his thigh is a lot more in focus and his like, tunic and his bowden, and his little knife and uh, the cuffling and all that is becoming in focus. Um, you can actually go a lot higher on the f-stop um, if you're trying to emulate real-world cameras, which if you're rendering, it's sort of a wise idea to do because that's essentially what you're doing. You're taking a photograph in a computer. Um, it's wise to stay with like your standard camera um, f-stop ranges. So 16 is usually the highest you'd go on a 35 millimeter camera. Um, and the lowest I think you'd go is like 
three or 2.8, I think I remember having on one of my cameras when I used to uh, shoot on film. Um, so yeah, 16 is the is pretty much the highest I'd go. So um, let's have a look at the comparison between the four. This is 5.6. You can see the background completely blown out and only very a, a very small amount is in, of him is in focus. This is eight, starting to come into focus a bit more. There's 11, a little bit more focus. And there's 16. So you can see that uh, it makes quite a bit of difference. And depending on what you're going for with your shot, um, you'll need to play with it um, to figure out what you want to get. So yeah, um, also depending on how far your camera is from your uh, subject can determine things as well. I'll show you one more thing with this. If we go back to 5.6 um, and have a look at that render again. So this is what 5.6 looks like. It's pretty blown out. Um, but we can sort of t tweak that a little bit if we want um, and we can change it to be still really blurry in the background but have a little bit more in focus within the range that is in focus and that's done with this focus region scale so if we change this to 2.0 you're going to get twice as much in focus and let's have a look at what that does okay so as you can see this is the standard 5.6 and this is the 5.6 with um, twice the focal um, uh, uh, focal length and focus so you can see it sort of starts to make it look a little bit more like the 8 it's actually almost exactly like the 8 um, oh no sorry that's the 11 makes it look like the 11 so um, what I would normally do is instead of using the um, fo focus region scale I'd actually just stick with um, your standard f-stops if you don't know what they are you could probably look them up on a website and um, just look at what um, your standard f-stops are on a camera and sort of just go from there if you don't know much about photography if you just want to get it basically like if you figure out what's in focus and you're sort of close you can play with this a little bit but I just st uh, stick with what you know and if you're me you know photography so that's what I'd go with so yeah that's basically all you need to know to get yourself started um, it's a really cool little trick especially if you've got an HDRI background because it sort of puts the model uh, in the scene a bit more because it's like you know I'm using like I've got a CG looking camera uh, character with a real background from a photograph so it makes him look like he's actually in an environment rather than just you know a guy floating in space um, so I hope you like this tutorial if you did click like um, and if you want to see more tutorials or if you've got any requests for tutorials uh, leave me a little comment um, I'm happy to do them I actually quite enjoy doing them um, and helping you guys out and if you have any questions uh, drop me a drop me a comment as well and I will get back to you as soon as I can um, usually within a day or so because apparently I've got no life just kidding no not kidding I don't have a life <laughs> I'll see you guys next time cheers